forecast. Late summer sunshine today with temperatures about 90 to 95 and light southwest winds. Mostly clear overnight, that overnight temperature very close to 70. A little bit cooler, but not by much, near 88 Saturday, mostly sunny. Mostly clear Saturday night, 68 for the low. You'll be in the upper 80s and low 90s Sunday, partly to mostly sunny. Jonesboro, that's your KLEK 102.5 FM weather. From Feature Story News in London, I'm Ollie Barrett. Former Zimbabwean President Robert Mugabe has died at the age of 95. UK opposition leaders have agreed not to back Prime Minister Boris Johnson's calls for a snap election for now. A court in Ukraine has released a person of interest in the MH17 case ahead of an expected prisoner swap with Russia. And Hong Kong could be headed for another weekend of transport chaos. Protesters are threatening again to disrupt links to the city's airport. It's 9.01. Community Conversations is brought to you by Arkansas Early Learning, offering no-cost child care in Jonesboro and Northeast Arkansas. Applications at arearlylearning.org. Arkansas Early Learning is a nonprofit organization. KLEK LP Jonesboro, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. It's now time for Community Conversations, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. Good morning, everyone, and happy Friday, or Friday, as we should should say. Hope everyone is having a great start to your day. You're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. My special guest is Ms. Brandy Hodges from the Kirk County Jonesboro Public Library. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so let's just get started. What is on deck? What's happening at the library this month of September? <laughs> Tomorrow is our fall art and craft fair. We will be out there um, with our superhero theme from 10 until 3 o'clock. We have 62 artists and crafters who will be out there selling their handmade, handcrafted arts and crafts, including jewelry. We've got people who sew, people who paint, people who draw. We have um, lots of different unique things that you may not have seen before because our rules include trade you know following trademark law which means that if you didn't come up with it you can't sell it so um you won't see um comic book characters or things of that nature you'll see you know things that someone worked really hard on um so it's a really um special event because everything that is out there has to be touched and altered in some way so we allow you to to sell anything that you make or if you refinish furniture and you upcycle it that's you 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 changed it you had to do something in order to alter it so we'll be out there with our artists and crafters from 10 to 3 but we'll also have some special visitors the the Jonesboro Police Department and Fire Department will be out there at our event because our event is a superhero theme so okay. there are local heroes That's we'll right. also have the NEA Kennel Club out there um, and they're going to bring doggies because did you guys know that dogs can be superheroes too yeah. there's a really <laughs> great video I watched online of a woman that she was about to have a seizure but her her service dog pushed her down so that she would be on the ground when she had that seizure seizure so she wouldn't injure herself further and those are special dogs that are trained to do that and so dogs can be superheroes they can save your life so we'll have the NEA Kennel Club out there talking about that I will be dressed as book girl oh my goodness (laughs) she encourages reading and that could be a superpower yes the more you know the more you read the more you expand your knowledge dr seuss right there (laughs) all right so tell us about you know some of the vendors you also have local vendors we do we have some food vendors coming so we'll have as i bend down we'll have um Smooch's Burnouts. They do lots of wonderful different types of foods. We'll have Gigi's Cupcakes. They always make themed cupcakes to go along Uh with our event. And we're going to have Pearson Family Shaved Ice out there because it's going to be a hot day. We plan these. (laughs) So it is September. What? We plan these so many months out that 
you know, we don't know what the, the weather's going to be like, so you, you can't guarantee anything, but in the spring, it was so windy, we had to hold our tents in place, and it's not going to be windy, okay. but it will be warm, but that's, uh, you know, we've got the Pearson family shaved ice out there, and we'll have ice cold bottled water um, and coolers throughout the, the event, so if you see um, bright red or blue coolers just randomly setting places out at the event tomorrow, feel free to help yourself to bottled water. I'm, when I leave you guys today, I'm stopping by Sam's to pick up five cases of water. So, you know, it's it's a good time. But we do have a lot of other events going on this month. In addition to our um, biannual Art and Craft Fair, we do a lot of um, wonderful things for the entire family. You can find all of our events by going to the library website, www.libraryinjonesboro.org slash events. I also have added all of the events to our online calendar. But let's start with children's. Okay. So we have our fall events for kiddos starting on Monday. So we will do um, our regular um, after school timed activities starting at four o'clock. But let's start with Monday, the 9th of September. We're doing a new thing. It's called preschool playtime. So if you have any kiddos that are not in in school yet, so if they're in if they're in preschool. Um, and they're available at this time or if they're younger than preschool age, we're going to do preschool playtime every Monday at 10 o'clock in the morning. Okay. And that's going to include things like bubbles and chalk. We're going to play musical chairs. We're going to do some seek and find games. And that's for kiddos two to five years old. So, you know, if you, if you, have, if you watch our grandbabies, you know, in the morning or if you're a stay-at-home mom and you're looking for something fun to do with the kiddos. Maybe you have a really wiggly one that you know won't be able to stay still for story time. Because I, I, I talk to moms who say that all the time. Oh, I would love to come to story time. But, you know, Sally is just, she can't sit still okay. for that long. So this preschool playtime might be the perfect activity for that kiddo. We also have family story time every Tuesday and Wednesday and Saturday. That's a new thing that we've started um, this past spring. And we have a lot of moms and dads who say, I would love to bring the kids to story time, but I can't come during the week because I'm at work. Okay. So we're doing these story times on Saturdays. So um, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays at 10, come to story time. We do something, we have a different theme every week. Um, and uh, we do stories, of course, because it's called story time. <laughs> we do songs like Skinamarink, um, which I know all the words to because it's fabulous. <laughs> um, we do different little dances. We, we'll handle them a pencil with a ribbon attached to the end of it, and you do a, a fun little ribbon dance. Um, and then, you know, you get to do a craft. And it's all about reading those stories to kids. Um, let me pull a picture that I saw on social media last night. It's right here. It says, if you read one book a day to your child, they will have read 1,825 books by their fifth birthday. Every day counts, every book counts. Wow. And that's another important thing about story time because at story time, not only, one, it's important for you to read to your kiddos at home. It's so important for you to read to your kids at home, but also bringing them to story time, they get to hear another person read, maybe another inflection of words from another person. A lot of parents say they don't know how to read to their kids. The, per the best thing you can do is then is come to story time, watch people who are trained to do story times, read to kiddos, and you know, you'll, we'll all learn something that way. Okay. But we have our, our story times for families of all ages, kiddos of all ages. Then we have our special baby story times on Thursdays and Fridays, and don't tell the other story times, but laps at story time is my favorite story time. <laughs> you can't have a bad day if you go and watch babies have story time. No. They're, they, they soak everything in. They just listen and take it all in. Those are at 10 o'clock on Thursdays and Fridays, all starting next week. Okay. Those are all of our daytime activities for the kids. Alrighty. I want to um, back up, and I guess we'll get to this in the different age groups. Um, I'm looking at the calendar, and I see there's something for teens. And yes. this is really interesting, um, yoga and meditation for teens. We often don't think about what teens need and what they're dealing with on a daily basis, the peer pressure going to school, just a variety of things. So, All those hormones. So when does this actually start for the teenagers? Well, I, I think it's a, a one-time event. Okay. Um, I, I, I don't have the teen calendar pulled up, so let me get over there. 
you can if you go to our website you can search by different age groups which is what I had done on my phone um, that's if you're looking if you only have a teenager in your family or you only have adults in your family or kids that's a, a great thing to do let me get over to it let's see yoga and meditation so every month we do a uh, first Friday of the month we do a Friday program okay. and so this month it's going to be yoga and meditation so it's just a one-off event they may do it again in the future um, but we'll have someone come in and um, usually when we have a yoga class we have a yoga instructor come in okay. and just and lead the program but it's just that so if you have a teen in your life 13 to 17 years old you know bring them to the library if they especially you know I know all of us I was a teenager a long time ago but you know we have you know all these you know what we think are the worst things that can happen in your life when you know you're you realize that your socks didn't match it could be something trivial or it could be something very important but it may be something that's only important to them or maybe something that's very important going on on another life that you don't know about but maybe this yoga and meditation can can help them in some way that you don't even know that they need okay that's awesome all right so i'm sorry i jumped ahead and, you're okay um so going back to the kids okay you don't have a very full schedule of after school activities story times and this so give us a breakdown of the age groups. So for those who may be wondering, okay, what's the age groups for kids, tweens, teens? So we have our different age groups via the, our, our um, events. Kids are up to 12 years old. Okay. We do have um, special things like the preschool playtime is 2 to 5 years old. Um Lapsit is is zero to two years old. Okay. Our Lapsit programs, our family programs, are children up to twelve years old in their families. We also um, we don't really do tween programming in the regular part of the year, but tweens are those who have completed the fourth through sixth grades. Okay. Um, but we do a lot of tween programs in the summer, and we may do more of those. Because they're very popular programs because it's, it's those kiddos who are like 11 and 12 years old and they don't want to do the little kid stuff. Mm -hmm. They're too big for that. So they want to do, you know, fun stuff, um, make and take kind of programs. And then we have teens, which is 13 to 17. And then our adult programs are for 18 and up. A lot of our adult programs, we will say you can have... You can be 13 and up as long as you have an adult with you. But okay. then there are other adult programs like our upcoming event that's already full. So if you were interested in the tie-dye program, watch for the next one because our event is already full. But that one was for adults only. So 18 and up only. Um, but we have, um, cause, because it's so popular and it's an adult program, we wanted to make sure only adults got to do it okay. um, but we do have a lot of programs for different specific age groups so thank you for asking because that's okay. a very important um, thing for us to, to bring up every now and then because you know our te teen services librarian only allows teens because that's their that's their um, safe place that's their place that they can come and do something that is because again when you're a teenager as we said previously you have all these hormones and <laughs> and things going on that just you know, I remember, you know, getting upset about something trivial at the drop of a hat because I didn't know how to feel about it. Mm -hmm. And teenagers need that safe space where they know that something is just for them. It's special for them. So that's why we don't allow adults, you know, if your mom brings you to the event, mom can't stay. Okay. You know, because it's just for, the, just for those teens. Um, we do have our after school programs starting on Monday. Those um, are held for school age children. So school age is kindergarten um, through sixth grade. Okay. Um, and those are held at four o'clock Monday through Friday and we have different events for each day. On Mondays, we do Master Builders, where we will use the E, the engineering in STEAM. STEAM is science, technology, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. So we'll use that E for engineering, and they'll do things like building towers and building bridges. And in many cases, they'll use cardboard, they'll use blocks, they'll use things that you wouldn't think about, like pop cleaners and little fuzzy balls mm -hmm. to build tunnels so that they can tell by which angle you use to build the tunnel will you get your little fuzzy ball to go all the way through your your tunnel oh, okay. so you're they're learning engineering by having fun 
On Tuesdays, we do Extreme Steam, which is exploring high and low technologies. Um, we have robots and we have all sorts of different things. We have this block game that is so challenging because you just get a picture and you're told a number of the different shapes to use, but no instructions. Hmm. And you have to look at the picture and the different shapes and figure out how to make it. So it's, it's, it's hard and I can't do it sometimes. Um, Wednesdays we do creative kids we'll, we'll do weekly art and craft projects on Thursdays in September we're gonna do music and movement where you can will dance play and more okay. on in October we're gonna do passport Two, and we leave it blank at the end passport to where um, and each um, week we'll highlight a different country and so we'll learn about a different place and, and their culture and the type of things they're known for and all of those type of things. And then in um, November, we'll do Mad Science for that event. And Fridays, we'll do Mind Games where you can strengthen your brain through games and activities. So all of our after-school activities are fun, but the kids learn something. Our previous children's librarian called it Fungicational Programming. So they learn, but they, they have fun at the same time, so it's kind of tricky. That's awesome. So many wonderful things for the kids to do. So again, go to libraryinjonesboro.org. Um, and again, you can filter the search engine with the events by age group and then also branch location. Um, there are other branches. Um, Jonesboro, Caraway, Harrisburg, Lake City, Lepanto, Martre, Bonnet, and Wiener. And again, these are probably within a 30 minute or less. Um, mm -hmm. Some 45 minutes, but... Like, cause Martry is Martry the farthest away. Um, the actually, at, at Lepanto. So, you, cause you go to Martry and then go to Lepanto. Okay. So again, make it's still. How many people jump over to Memphis? You know, that's about exactly five minutes. So, make this uh, an adventure. Go to one of these other branches, uh, and maybe write out a plan or. I don't know. Just make it fun. Make it do a scavenger hunt of some kind. I don't know. <laughs> and then all of our branches, we have a courier route that runs five days a week that will be going to the branches. That I mean, they'll be they should be leaving in the next forty five minutes from our library, and they'll go to all seven branches. Okay. Um, soon to be eight because our Brooklyn location should be opening up this fall. That's awesome. So they'll be going to all of those locations. So if you go online to our website and you want to read. A particular book and you see oh man they don't have it at the Jonesboro library but you see that we have it in Caraway you can put it on hold um, the care you can put the request the Caraway book and the next couple of days that book will be picked up and brought to your location so say you're in Mark Tree but you want to request the Caraway book that book will be picked up and it will be dropped off at your location and then you, you'll get a notification either by, by mail or email, whichever you've chosen when you signed up for your library card, okay. um, and it'll be dropped off. Awesome. Um, we also have our bookmobile in its final stages of being constructed, and um, it should be, should be, um, at, in, in Jonesboro in November. November. We're hoping at least to have it by the Christmas parade okay. so we can drive it in December or the Christmas parade. But we've been working on it for a long time. We have a company who is building it for us, and we're working on the route schedule. Our assistant director is um, hard working on that. Um, and we will be going to our different branch locations, and we'll have our br uh, branch towns. We'll have set times. Um, again, she's working very hard on that. We have um, regular meetings um, to figure all that out. Um, but jumping to our teens, we do have a lot of teen events. I didn't get to stay for it yesterday, so I don't know how it went. Okay. But we had our first in a new monthly series that we're going to be doing called Adulting 101. Ooh. It's for this the age group is a little different for this. It's 13 to 22 years old. That's new. <laughs> it is new because we, we know that I took a class in high school called career orientation. They taught you how to write a check and balance a checkbook and all of those things. But our teens aren't learning that. They're not learning those skills. And so our teen services librarian, Jessica, has a new group of teens okay. called a teen advisory board for the Craighead County Jonesboro Public Library. And I would love to have them come on with me sometime. Awesome. They are made up of teens from different schools who help her come up with programming. They plan programming. 
This is one of the programs that they said, we don't know how to do these things. We don't know what to do. And so last night they had a representative from Jonesboro High School come out and talk about how to fill out college applications, how to, how to get financial aid, what do you do first? How do you get signed up to take the ACT, the SAT, whatever test it is you're gonna take? You know, what do you need to do? And so, again, I didn't get to stay for it because I had a, a prior commitment, but I'll ask her today how that all went. But that's something they're gonna do once a month, and they're gonna have someone come talk about financial literacy. How do you get an apartment? You know, wow. what are, you know, the things that you need to know when you're first starting out that, that you, you yeah. maybe it's something that your parents don't think to teach you, or maybe they don't know themselves. Yeah, it's like reading terms and agreement. Exactly. That will get you tripped up. A lot of times, I know um, when I first came and went to college, you know, everyone would sign up for credit cards. And yes. And you don't. And you're that, pushed into it. You don't read the right print and you don't read those APR words and all that. You don't know stuff. what an APR is. Right. Um, so we definitely need to have more of these conversations with our children about just the little nuances that we as adults take for granted. Like, because we think we know. Anyway, we need to have more of this conversation. We just assume <laughs> that the kiddos know in yeah. many cases. But we're going to, like... I didn't know how to change a tire and I am this old and I didn't know how to change a tire and we're going to potentially, it's up to the teen advisory board, but potentially have someone come out and teach just common car maintenance because in many cases, these teens have not had a car. You know, they may still not have a car. A lot of young adults may not have a car. Um, A lot of times it's one car per family, you know, because you can't afford to do anything different. All right, so we're going to put a pause right there. <laughs> we'll come back. We will definitely pick up this conversation talking about more tea units. You're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We're speaking with Ms. Brandy Hodges from the library. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after these announcements. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. Why do we still get frustrated in our marriage? I'm Mark Merrill with today's Family Minute. My wife Susan and I just celebrated 24 years of marriage. After more than two decades together, you'd think we'd always have smooth sailing, but we don't. We both work really hard to have a great marriage. So why can't we get it all together? It's our selfish nature. We want things from each other that we don't always get. She wants me to cherish, affirm, and encourage her. I want her physical affection. So what should we do? First, we need to remember that we don't always get what we want when we want it. Second, we need to stay focused on serving and giving, giving selflessly and sacrificially to each other. Remember, your family first. Family Minute is made possible by the Kappa Nu Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization committed to service to all mankind. Kappa Nu Omega Alpha Kappa Alpha on Facebook and K N O M E G A 1908.com. Family Minute is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook gears underscore inc on instagram and the gears foundation at gmail.com you've heard from both sides of the one percent sales tax debate now hear both sides debate face to face for the first time ever from the klek studio on the radio on 102.5 fm and stream live on our facebook page members of team jonesboro and citizens taxed enough will sit face to face with hosts Kabila jones and laganzi kale for 90 minutes from 3 o'clock p.m. until 4.30 p.m. Monday, September 9th. Each side will debate the pros and cons of the 1% sales tax proposal. Join in on the discussion, and then on Election Day, Tuesday, September 10th, vote. Note, KLEK 102.5 FM and the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council do not endorse, support, or oppose this issue. However, we encourage everyone to get out and vote.
The McDaniel Law Firm, 400 South Main Street in Jonesboro, is a firm believer in justice and equality for the minority community. The McDaniel Law Firm has fought for our rights for over 44 years. The McDaniel Law Firm offers legal help for wrongful death, as well as trucking and automobile accidents. Bobby and Brett McDaniel are available for a free consultation at 870-336-4747 or at www.mcdaniellawyers.com. Experience the joy with Bishop Adrian R. Rogers, pastor of Fullness of Joy Church, 2120 Thorn Street, Jonesboro, Arkansas, 72401. Wednesday night, Word and Worship, 7 p.m. Prayer, Thursday night at 7 p.m. Sunday School, 9.30 a.m. Sunday Morning Worship, 11 o'clock a.m. And our Sunday night live service at 7 p.m. KLEK 102.5 FM wants to be active in the community. If you or your organization is hosting a community service event, we would like to know about it and be a part of it. KLEK will promote your event on air, online, and on social media. KLEK personalities may also attend the event and provide music and or entertainment. Certain restrictions and availability may apply. If you or your organization would like to partner with KLEK to make the Jonesboro community a better place, call 870 or email us at klek at klekfm.org. In order for a community announcement or church announcement to be aired on KLEK 102.5 FM, we ask that the announcement be sent at minimum one week in advance. Thank you for supporting KLEK 102.5 FM. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM with Ms. Brandy Hodges as my special guest. She's from the Craig County Jones for Public Library. On the first part of the show, we talked about some of the children's events, well, I say events, yeah, events yeah. that are happening, the story times and lap sits and all that good stuff. And um, most of those are happening in the morning. And you can go to libraryandjonesboro.org and find those events. Uh, you can filter by age and location of the branches. And then there are also some teen events we were talking about um we finished up what well, we were talking about the adulting one-on-one um, yes. for the teens and that actually the different age bracket which is up to 22 years old because okay. we realized that you know you don't have to be a teen to not how to do not know how to do some of these things mm -hmm. so we have these events for um thir 13 to 22 year olds adulting 101 and they're held going to be held on the first Thursday of every month. Okay. So we had our September one and our next one will be coming up in October. Um, but that's a, that's a great event. It's okay. just, and we've had a lot of great reaction, especially a lot of adults saying, Hey, I want to take this, but I'm, I'm, I'm too old for it. Do you think in our society, we often, um, push kids or we, classify them as adults once they hit that 19 20 21 we age do. bracket in there and we just assume a lot of times that they know these things because we know these things sometimes we don't know these things so yeah, there's some but, things <laughs> yeah but we assume i guess that they should know how to do that but again i was in school in the 90s when i graduated and a lot of stuff is happening now and so <laughs> but it's more more emphasis was put on what to do after graduation i think then than there is now okay um and, and I, I don't i don't know i i think that we um we just want to do everything we can to help these you know, young adults because that's what they are they're young adults mm -hmm. help them be the best that they can be and that's why i love our teen area as a library because we want to do what the teens want to do and i think also it just as a society as a whole we often i don't want to say overlook that age bracket we expect a lot of out of them but we don't also always equip them with what they need to be successful in different stages of their lives um, so i hope this conversation continues and you know i hope that someone else says okay let's have continued conversations throughout the month other organizations step up and say let's you know continue until the library when comes back up again so putting it out there if anyone else would like to kind of get some the ball rolling on this as well or partner with the library mm -hmm. now are you only doing it once a month because of the staff or I'm, uh, it's just a once a month program okay um, we, we do many of our programs just once a month okay. we do our after school programs for kids um, once a week but especially our teen and adult programs those are generally held once a month because there's so much 
other things yeah. going on huh? within teens lives they have so many extracurricular activities yes. that they have to do there's just really not time for them to attend you know maybe a weekly event okay. um, but for teens um, if you want to start, sort of celebrate those teens um, we do have a teen booth at the at the library art and craft fair tomorrow okay. so we have a lot of very talented teens in our area and several of them will be at the library tomorrow selling their items also Jessica will be um, doing henna tattoos for teens so if you're a teenager um, and would like to get a henna tattoo stop by the library between 10 and 3 tomorrow and we will you'll be able to get one. And about how long do those last? Um, they last a couple of weeks depending on how well you take care of it. Okay. Because um, it's uh, um, a plant-based um, dye, st dyes, you know, okay. whatever it is, <laughs> exactly. Uh, but it, um, when you put it on, if you will not pick at it and not mess with it, um, for several hours and let it just dry naturally and then it'll flake off okay um then it will and the more you of course wash that area the quicker it will um, go away and I've, I've read that you can look put saran wrap over it and it when it's drying and it'll help it last okay. longer um the other events for teens include coming up um on the 21st we have well actually today we have yoga and meditation okay happening at the library at 5.30 for our Friday Friday. Then coming up on the 21st, we have our mock ACT test. So if you have a teen, a young adult who um, is getting ready to take the ACT, even if they're younger and they, they need to start practicing, um, they can come and take the mock test. Um, and that it's it's an old version of the real test. Okay. You know, it's, it's, it's a real version, but it's not one currently being used and it's it's just you get a real score and you get to see where you are and where your weaknesses are and where your strengths are because that's important to celebrate as well and um, we also have teen book club which is a monthly event we do for teens as well as teen gaming club okay. so and those are all happening on the same day saturday september 21st um we have brush and pen happening on the 26th of September. That's a Thursday at 5.30. Okay. And if you have a creative team, maybe they like to draw, maybe they like to paint, maybe they like to write. I know you're a poet and you mm -hmm. like to get down your words that are in your heart. Maybe you have a teen who likes to, it's true. You know, maybe you have a teen who likes to do the same thing. This is a great event to encourage that creativity. And then it also helped, again, we talked about the, the different pressures that teenagers face that we often overlook. This will help them release those emotions as yeah. well. <laughs> and we have our newest event, um, Teen Chess Club. Before that, we have Random Fandom Friday every month at the end of the month we have we do just a random fandom and I, I i don't know that we know what it is sometimes <laughs> that sometimes it's just it's random um, but they have a lot of fun and that's an event that starts when we close at seven and okay. it goes until nine oh, wow. so it's just a great safe place for you to drop your teens off on a on a friday evening um, and then we have a new event called Teen Chess Club that's going to be held on the 28th at 3 o'clock Saturday, September 28th. And then on October 3rd, I know we're not there yet, but we're going to have our Adulting 101 class again. And I don't know what that one is going to be about, but it is our next upcoming um, event. So those are our events coming up for teens. Now we have some specifically um, adult-themed events. Okay. Um, we're going to be doing Dungeons & Dragons today. So if you've never played Dungeons & Dragons, this is a great place for beginners to get started. But if you've played before, come and join the campaign. They're going to be um, um, playing the game twice a month um, on Friday the 6th and Friday the 20th um, this month. So every other week. We will be doing a Dungeons and Dragons game. We also have, and I'm going to go out of order from okay. the date we are doing because tomorrow would be Tai Chi. Okay. But not everyone knows we do every week exercise classes. Okay. So if you don't have a gym membership, maybe you don't have, can't afford a gym membership, maybe you just don't want a gym membership. Come to the library. If you're looking to exercise, I can check out all the DVDs that we have on exercise, which are great and wonderful. And if you like to exercise alone, I don't. I'm not motivated enough. No. It will sit in my work bag where I put it after I checked it out, and it will stay there until it's due, and I bring it back. 
was I'm just not motivated enough to do it by myself. I do better in a class environment. Okay. And if you're the same way, come to one of our exercise classes. On Tuesdays, we have Mind and Body with Eastern Livity. You do yoga. Sometimes you do Pilates. Occasionally, they do geokinesis. And it's all using your own body weight against you in okay. these. You don't have to have any specialized equipment. A yoga mat is helpful. And if you don't have one, the library has them that we can let you borrow. Okay. We also have yoga, just regular yoga, on um, Thursdays at 12.15. It's a half hour class, 12.15 to 12.45. It's a low impact class just to get you moving in the middle of the day. We also have Zumba on Thursdays at 5.30, and that's a dance, a Latin dance exercise class that I am not coordinated enough for, but it's it looks like so much fun. And the ladies and gentlemen who come to that class just look like they're having a ball and shimmying off those pounds or strengthening their body. It's not always about weight loss. Something Sometimes it's about just being stronger or, you know, relieving stress. I yeah. love going to the mind and body class on Tuesday, especially if I had had a, a, a stressful couple of weeks because it just helps me relax and okay. helps me feel better. Another way to relax is Tai Chi. That is held on Saturdays at 10. So, you know, make plans in the morning. Come to Tai Chi at 10 and then stick around and attend the art and craft fair. That's a wonderful idea. We're going to have a lot of fun. But those are our full four art, um, art. Those are our four exercise classes that we have every week. Okay. That's awesome. All right. So I'm just scrolling through the calendar and there's another tie-dye class and novel lovers. Um, again, there's just so much and for the adults to do as well. So, you know, they, again, if you have children, teens, um, there may be some events that line up uh -huh. where your kids can go to one and you can go to another. Right. Now, but let me ask this. For the children that are under 12, do they have to always be accompanied by an adult? Um, I, if I'm wrong, I apologize, but I believe it's eight and younger okay. have to be accompanied by an adult. Okay. Um, but... I, we have our policy online. You can go to libraryandjonesbro.org and go to the policies, and they'll all be on there. Okay. Uh, because I may be wrong about that age. Okay. And there's one event that's coming up before you come back again, um, book club between the covers, which will be an off-site event. That is um, an, an event that we have, um, and it's held at, a, a, I believe, a restaurant in town. I don't recall. This is Horizon Bistro inside Courtyard Marriott. And it's one of our um, former employees leads that book club. Oh, wow. Um, it, but the rest of our book clubs are held on site okay. at the library. Um, if you would like to join any of our book clubs, we have the first Tuesday of the month, we have the um, Between the Covers Romance Book Club. The second Tuesday of the month, which is this coming Tuesday, everyone, we have the book club YA at Heart. We are reading a book called I Have Lived a Thousand Years, and it's about a 13-year-old Holocaust survivor. It's a nonfiction book, oh and I've been having to read a lot of um, fun, light books after reading that one because it was wonderful but it broke my heart but if you have any history any um, interest in historical um nonfiction, um or um any interest in learning more about you know what these people endured this that survived the holocaust our book club meets on tuesday um this coming tuesday at six o'clock, we like to read a nonfiction book every now and then, um, and this one counts as a, a young adult book because she was only thirteen. You know, so it's it was a wonderful book, and I'm going to be making a traditional Jewish dish to serve. Um, we're going to have stuffed cabbage rolls, oh, wow. um, and that's going to be um, book club this week. Um, upcoming books, we're reading a fiction book that's fun <laughs> next month. We're going to do um, a book by Holly Black called The Cruel Prince. And then in November, we're going to read Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. Um, my group is not a big fan of reading books that are not standalones, but we read young adult fiction, and pretty much all young adult books are trilogies. Oh, wow. So they actually wanted to read a sequel, which I was like, are you sure? You know, but I'm so excited. We read Strange the Dreamer last year by Lainey Taylor. It's wonderful. If you haven't read it, it's high fantasy. Okay. It's it's so good. It's I love books that are something you've never 
imagined before, a world that you couldn't even imagine, and that's what this is. And we're going to read the sequel to that. And then Super Fun in December, if you've never joined book club before um, and you want to get your feet wet without having to have read a book to come to the club, um, we will be, um, dis well, actually, we'll be discussing, um, well, uh, September 10th, we'll be discussing I Have Lived a Thousand Lives. We'll be discussing The Cruel Prince in October on the 8th. So we won't be discussing a book in December, we're going to have a book exchange. Okay. So everyone who wants to come to that event on December 10th, bring a, a young adult book that is one of your favorite books or a book you haven't read but you have, have heard really good things about. Okay. Um, bring a book and we'll wrap it before you come and we'll do a book exchange. We'll draw names or something. And we ask if you want to bring a holiday snack and we're just going to have a little holiday party for our book club and we're going to vote for six months of books in wow. 2020. We're going to vote through Jan for January um, through um, June. Um, okay. And then, um, let me see, I'm going to get over to Novel Lover so that I can tell you what they're reading. Here it is. So we have um, Novel Lovers meets on the fourth Tuesday of every month at 10 o'clock in the morning. And they are going to be reading... Their upcoming books include September 24th, Verena by Charles Frazier, October 22nd, Small Great Things by Jody Picoult, and November 26th, A Gentleman in Moscow by Amor Towles. So those are novel lovers. They read new and older novels. Okay. They focus on popular fiction. Popular fiction. Okay. All right. One thing I want to go back and highlight, um, you said that your book for this month is a nonfiction. And yes. so this is not the first time you all have done nonfiction. And I like how you all incorporate different ethnicities um, mm -hmm. with your stories. Because I want to say sometime last year, you did a story that was maybe African-American, not an African-American. It was, um, oh my goodness, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> they made a movie out of out of the book. Um, let, me, let me look it up. Uh, their new book is... Um, it, it was a, a really great book about um, a, a young black man who was reaching for a brush in his car and the officer thought he was reaching for a gun oh, wow. and he sh shot and killed him. So Angie Thomas, I believe, is the author. Um, was it The I just Hate have You to, Give? The Hate You Give, thank okay. you. <laughs> but we, we read that one and it was such a good book, but it was... It was something that none of us in the room had ever experienced that kind of prejudice. And so it was eye-opening to see that and to, like, because I don't know about you, when I read a book, I feel like I'm in that person's mm -hmm. mind and in their heart. So, you know, to kind of feel that as you're reading and feel what she's feeling, because, I, you know, you can watch a movie and cry at the end, and I do that. I'm not going to say I don't, but like when I finish reading a book, it just, I will, I can sit there and cry for half an hour or longer. It's a totally different experience. You know, it's, I love reading so much. That's why we do try to read what we do in, my, in the book club I lead, Young Adult at Heart, is we like to read all the different genres. Okay. So that was a realistic fiction, which is not my favorite genre because I think we have, in my personal, we have so much real life mm -hmm. that I don't want to have more real life. I want to read a fantasy book with a dragon or something. But we like to read nonfiction. We like to read fantasy. We like to read a, a, a real, uh, I'm sorry, historical fiction. I couldn't okay. get my mind wrapped around it. We like to read a historical fiction every now and then. So there are some really great ones out there um, that we have even read this year. We read a realistic fiction recently that was a, 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 a shooting happens at a, a, a hunt club and no one knows who did it. So it was kind of a mystery, but kind okay. of realistic. But reading is one of the best ways of escapism. If you, if you just need to have some stress relief, you know, pick up a book. Come in and get a magazine. We have some wonderful magazines that you can come to the library and use. Something we haven't talked about. Um, we have, and I don't know if we'll have time before the next break, but we have joined a new group. 
Right. As of this past Wednesday. So if you download, and I know you do, if mm. you use Libby to download books and you haven't made the, if you haven't used it this week, when you go to log on to Libby, it'll bring up your normal page, Craighead County Jonesboro Public Library, but it will say that there are no titles available. And that's because we have moved our entire collection to a new library in Libby. Okay. So what you'll need to do if you have the Libby app, mm -hmm. if you haven't done it yet, go up to the top right hand corner and click the Libby icon. Go to add a library and search for the Arkansas Digital Library Consortium. And when you find that, you'll click on it and then it'll ask you to choose a location. You'll choose the Jonesboro Craighead County Library, I believe is how it's in there. Um, and then you will add your library card. It's the card you already have. It's your same PIN number you already have. Um, you will add the library and then you'll add your library card. If you um, are like me and you can't just follow spoken instructions, I have um, shot a video that's on our Facebook page okay. that you can go and I do, I, I log in doing all the steps step by step on my phone okay. showing you how to do it. I also have written instructions if you go to libraryinjonesboro.org slash emedia under the Libby icon you'll find written instructions. I also have the overdrive instructions. Okay. So if you use the overdrive app there are instructions and a video on how to do that. Um, but it's um, going to take us it has taken us from our collection of 18,000, about 100 books. This collection had just under 50,000 titles when we joined it. And we joined our collection with their collection. So what this is going to mean is when you go to search for titles, you're going to find more things. When you go to search for a title with our collection, maybe you wouldn't have found everything you needed. Now you'll find it. Okay, well, definitely you have to try this. I gotta enter my card number. So, again, we're gonna take another quick break. When we come back, we're, we will wrap up our discussion with Ms. Brandy Hodges from the Craig County Jonesboro Public Library. So, please stay tuned. We'll be right back after these announcements. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. We're back with Money Matters. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. More income does not equal more wealth. To put it more simply, we believe that income and wealth are the same thing. They're not. This is why so many pro athletes, entertainers, and Powerball jackpot winners, people who seem set for life, end up broke. While people with higher incomes do tend to have more wealth than lower and middle income people, the size of our paychecks actually explains only about a third of wealth disparities among households. The rest is determined by two things, savings and investment. To grow your net worth, the real measure of your wealth, not income, you have to commit to spending less than you make and saving and investing the difference. There's nothing wrong with getting paid as much as you legally can. However, if you literally spend every penny you get and then borrow to spend more, you will not be wealthy no matter how big your paycheck gets. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. for Money Matters at AURN.com. Money Matters is made possible by the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization focused on joy in our sisterhood, power in our voice, and service in our hearts. www.jonesboroalumni.dst.org. Money Matters is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook, Gears underscore Inc. on Instagram, and the Gears foundation at gmail.com money matters is brought to you by bank corp south offering checking savings loans credit cards and wealth management five locations in jonesboro to serve you 
www.bancorpsouth.com or 870-972-9800. KLEK thanks C.J. Pepper and the staff of Life Strategies Counseling Incorporated for helping people through hard times in life such as depression, family issues, stress, abuse, and more. They offer counseling and therapy for all ages, individuals, families, and groups. They are located at 1217 Stone Street. Phone number 1-866-972-1268 or online at lscihelp.com. Starks Auto Plaza at 2829 Red Wolf Boulevard is a proud KLEK supporter offering luxury pre-owned vehicles sold wholesale to the public. At Starks, we never say no. 870-203-9980. Details at StarksAutoPlaza.com. After the show, it's the after party there. After the show, it's the after party there. Worldwide. DJ Sway, the after party. That's right, every Saturday night, right here on the number one radio station in Jonesboro, Arkansas, KLEK 102.5 FM. It's the after party with DJ Sway. Mix me up, DJ Sway. After party. So, Saturday nights, 10 p.m. to 2 a.m., be prepared to hear the hottest hip hop, RB, throwbacks, classic jams, and slow jams. Live in the mix. Yo. Yo, the after party. DJ Sway. Check it out. The Mu Omicron Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated was established on January 1st, 1977. Originally serving Blytheville, Arkansas, and now serving Jonesboro, Blytheville, Osceola, Marion, and West Memphis, Arkansas. Today, the chapter continues to make an impact by focusing on Alpha's national community outreach initiatives such as My Brother's Keeper, A Voteless People is a Hopeless People, Go to High School, Go to College, Project Alpha, Boy Scouts, and the March of Dimes. The Mu Omicron Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is committed to Alpha mission of developing leaders, promoting brotherhood and academic excellence, while providing service and advocacy to the community. More information about the Mu Omicron Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is available at MOL Alphas on Facebook or via email at molalphas at gmail.com. This portion of KLEK programming can be made possible by your business. Your support will help in educating, entertaining, and empowering the community by supporting local talent, serving the community you love, and providing information on issues you care about from a different perspective. Call 870-203-9951 or visit klekfm.org to learn how we can help connect you more with the community or visit us at 1411 Franklin Street. KLEK 102.5 Jonesboro. Educating, entertaining, and empowering the community. KLEK 102.5 FM salutes small businesses. Small businesses promote local character and success, keeping money in the local economy, local jobs, entrepreneurship, community well-being, and so much more. Contact us today to learn more on how your small business could be featured on KLEK for as little as $25 per month. Shout out to Always and Forever Pet Grooming, offering baths, nails, and haircuts for dogs and cats. 2929 South Caraway Road, Jonesboro, 870-520-0925. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM with my special guest, Ms. Brandon Hodges from the Craig County Jonesboro Public Library. I hope that you all have been taking notes on all of the things that have, we've been talking about. But in just in case, you can go to libraryandjonesboro.org and go to the events tab and you can filter by age group, which is children, teens, adults, and you can filter by location, which I'm not going to try to name them off the top of my head. However, there are many locations with Brooklyn coming soon, uh, so be on the lookout for that, and a bookmobile coming soon. Yes. So have you seen the design of the bookmobile? Yes, I'm part of the, the bookmobile committee, and we um, it's going to be very pretty. It's, of course, going to be blue, because that's what we're known for, <laughs> and one side is going to say bookmobile, and the other side will have our logo on it, Okay. and then the back will have our contact information as well as different uh, programs and events and activities and services 
that you can experience at the library because everyone doesn't realize all that you can do with your fancy little library card, even without a library card. Mm -hmm. We don't card check at the door to attend an exercise class or anything like that. All right. So, but um, I do want to say another event we have coming up, again, if you were interested in the tie-dye class, that is already full, okay. but we will be offering it again in the future. So if you didn't get in on that one, that one is registration only. Okay. So if you didn't get signed up for that, I'm so sorry, but we'll offer it again in the future. We also are going to be doing a DIY cat condo class. Wow. So we're going to use cardboard and different things on September 16th. Um, at 5.30, so that's a fun event. If you have a kitty cat and, you know, you see all these fun things that you can buy for them made out of cardboard and such, but, you know, maybe you're like, I don't know if my cat would like that and I hate to spend the money. Come and build them something! Okay. You know, we're gonna have lots of fun. Um, we have also bingo coming up on the 11th. Um, I believe, let me go back. Yes, bingo on Wednesday the 11th. Um, so come and join us for one of these fun activities we've got going on. We have exercise classes, we've got book clubs, we've got um, lots of fun things you can do. Even if you just need to come in and, and sit for a while during the day, you can come and use one of our glass study rooms. We have seven of those. We have four study rooms in the back. If you're going to school, you know, and you need somewhere quiet to study, hey, we have a library with free Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is called library. You can't miss it. Okay. Um, we also have our art and craft fair coming up tomorrow from 10 until 3 at the library. Lots of wonderful um, arts and crafts will be available for purchase. And when you're purchasing from a local artist, you're helping a family. You're helping an individual who maybe has a dream of being an artist. Maybe they have a dream of, of being a crafter. Maybe this is a supplemental income to help them, you know, buy the necessary things they need to help with their family. So when you're attending a fun art and craft fair you're helping someone else we're also i don't think i mentioned this earlier having the 4-h club out who is bringing animals oh. of 4-h members and they're going to have a petting zoo we're going to have a visit from a cute little piggy who wore a tutu last time she came um lots of fun things um activities and events that we have all the time at the library going on you know i say that we're fun all the time but i I don't know that people realize how fun we can be at the library. We do so many activities, and my favorite word, everything is free. Everything is free. So please consider going out, supporting the library. Also, don't forget about Friends of the Library. Yes, we have a great bookshop. The Friends of the Library are a nonprofit group that work within the library. Um, they take donations of books. So, you know, say you have a bookshelf. Maybe your kiddo has outgrown some books or you just, you have books lying around that you read one time, but you're not ever gonna read them again. And you're not like me and you're not a book hoarder who will keep <laughs> them no matter what. You can bring them to the library and you can donate them. Um, we have a great bookshop in the back where, you know, you can go buy books and they're very inexpensive and it's a great way to add to your child's collection or if you have a, a classroom and you need some books for your classroom, it's a great way to get some great books for a, not a lot of money. All right, and then also along with the Libby app, there's uh, the Freegal, F-R-E-E-G-A-L. Love Freegal. You can download six Sony artists or six six songs that are under the sony library um, per week per week and another thing i want to point out is with our new libby arkansas digital library consortium mm -hmm. um it is um multiple partner i believe it said 41 partner libraries across the state mm -hmm. it's hosted by the state library we used to be four books check out four books on hold now five checkouts and seven holds okay. are available to every library card holder we also have access 360 which is our app for children's books up to um about 12 year old um, books okay. it, but you know you can uh, books that are considered children's books include the harry potter series and i love those books and a lot of books that are consider, considered children's material, you know, are great books for you to read. It's a great way to, if you're traveling, especially the holidays coming up, if you've got to, you know, make a, a weekend trip, or if you're going to a fall festival, grab an audiobook mm -hmm. from the library, listen to it with your kids while you're going to wherever you're going. That's right. Now, with most devices, you can listen 
to a book and then play a game at the same time. You can. And you can multitask. So keep the kids engaged. So thank you so much, Brandy, for coming through. Uh, thank you, everyone out, for, out there for listening and supporting. Don't forget the Arts and Crafts Fair tomorrow, 10 a.m. 10 to 3. Have a great day. And have a great thank you for listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5.